What's going on, y'all? Welcome back. We back at it again, November 1st, 2022. Game three got pushed back to tonight at 8.03. You know what time it is. Phillies are playing the Astros tonight in game three. We're going to get right into it. The matchup, a very intriguing one between Lance McCullers Jr. and Ranger Suarez. Lance McCullers Jr., very, very good pitcher. Young pitcher who's had a lot of bad fortune over his career, but he's back healthy for the World Series. And you look at this matchup, Lance McCullers Jr., 4-2, 47 and uh, two-thirds innings pitched this year, a 2.27 ERA with 50 strikeouts versus Ranger Suarez, 10-7, 155 innings pitched, 3.65 ERA, and 129 strikeouts. So the lineup for the Astros, Altuve, Pena, Alvarez in the three spot, Bregman back in cleanup, Kyle Tucker at five, uh, Yuli Gurriel at six, David Hensley at seventh, Chaz McCormick at eight, and then Martin Maldonado at nine. Versus the Phillies lineup, Kyle Schwarber, Reese Hoskins, JT in the three spot, Bryce in the cleanup spot, Castellanos, Bohm, Stott, Segura at eight, and then Brandon Marsh at nine. So this one is an intriguing matchup for a bunch of different reasons. And let me know what you guys think about this. So this team in the Astros has not really seen Ranger Suarez. The only time they've seen him was his last outing in, I believe, was October, September, uh, October, yeah. Versus the Astros, and he got hit around pretty well by this squad. Did not have a good outing. Nola had the perfect game through seven innings, and then Suarez came out, I think, in game two. It might have been 10 nothing. I, f- I forgot the score, but he got hit around pretty hard. So they've got a chance to see him a little bit, but not a whole lot. However, you know, uh, Ranger Suarez came in in relief in game one. So these guys like Bregman, Altuve, Alvarez, they got a chance to see him again. So the more you see a pitcher as a batter, the more of an advantage you're going to have. So I don't necessarily like that. However, he's going to have to make those adjustments mentally. And I'm talking about Suarez because they've seen you a couple times and these hitters, they're for real. They're no joke and they know exactly what they're going to be looking for when you get up there. Okay, so we're talking about game one. He faced Alvarez, Bregman and Kyle Tucker, the middle of that order. Did pretty well, but he's going to have to he might have to pitch backwards. He might have to um, try to throw strikes early, but. Like I said, pitch backwards and mix it up a little bit because they, at least those three guys have a cue on you. So come prepared. But I think that he's he has ice water in his veins. You saw it in the last game that they clinched against the Padres. Comes in in relief and gets the job done. So I, I think that Ranger Suarez, I don't think the, the moment's going to be too big for him. But this Astros team is going to be locked in on him. So he's going to have to make the adjustments. I hope that they have done their scouting on how these guys responded to him the first times. What what pitches did they swing at? Which ones did they leave and, and not swing at? Okay, every little corner has to be covered. Then you look across the, the dugout over at Lance McCullers Jr. And his story is a very intriguing one. Okay, And this is what this game hinges on, in my opinion. Because you look at Lance McCullers Jr., he had the Tommy John surgery... He had another injury before that. He's had a lot of ups and downs, a lot of misfortune. However, coming off of that Tommy John surgery, he's lost a little bit of velocity, but he's still throwing 96. However, he is a completely different pitcher. He has a completely different pitch selection than he did prior to those catastrophic injuries. Before he had the four-seam fastball that he was throwing at 97 at sometimes 98, right? Where now he doesn't, he hasn't even thrown his four seam fastball since 2021. I think he only threw it four times in 2020. And now he doesn't even have it in his repertoire. He has a sinker and he has a cutter. So completely changed his style of pitching. And he's mixing in that sinker and that cutter with his sl- with a really elite level slider and then that nasty, filthy, devastating knuckle curveball. And I think that's what makes him very unique. So we saw it. With the Mariners series, where he completely shut that that squad down. He gave up three earned runs against the Yankees in the ALCS, but overall still pitched pretty solid. So he's going to try to get a lot of swings and misses and try to get a lot of ground balls. So, looking further into what Dusty Baker was thinking, because he could have brought in Verlander 
for, I think, game four. Instead, he's going to be starting Javier in game four after Lance McCullers in game three. Now, you look at game game three at Lance McCullers, and some of these advanced stats that I'm looking at really stuck out to me as to what the Phillies can do against a very, very unique pitcher. Because as nasty and filthy as his secondary pitches are working off of that sinker, he also, at times, gets a little bit wild in terms of controlling the strike zone. He will definitely throw you a lot of balls, and you'll get more than your fair share of 2-0, 3-0 counts. So looking at the pitch summary statistics off of BaseballReference.com, you can see this year, 2022, the amount of 3-0 counts that batters have seen has been 6.6 out of 6.6% versus the MOB average of 4.5%. So he is above the league average in terms of the amount of 3-0 counts that batters see against him. And the, the amount of 0-2 counts that he gets batters into is 16.3%, which is well under the MLB average of 25.5%. So if the Phillies are patient, just like they were against Val- Valdez, and I know that they didn't have as much success as you would have won against that level of a pitcher, but they made him work. And Lance McCullers, like I said, he's going to throw you a lot of filth and junk that's going to break out of the zone. And at times, he's going to have difficulty locating that sinker. So you want to get him into these 2-0 counts, these 3-0 counts, these 3-1 counts. Make him work early and get to that bullpen. Like I mentioned in the previous video, it's almost it's a similar scenario to what you would tell a boxer. Yeah, you want to throw the jab. You want to set up the jab early, but you want to put in work to the body. You want to bring their arms down because they're trying to defend the body. Same thing, a similar analogy with baseball. You want to make them wear their arms out (laughs) and, and get to that bullpen and wear them down by constantly keeping them in the game. You don't want them sitting over there yeah, drinking beer, smoking cigars, eating bubble gum, whatever they do, and ready to come in like an assassin in the seventh or eighth inning. No, you want to bring them in early. Fourth, fifth, sixth inning. Get them in there early so that this can pay dividends in games four, five, and then six and seven if necessary. So that's what I would do if, if I was the the Phillies. You know, be be patient, work the count, make them throw you sinkers that are a little bit more elevated in the zone. You don't want the bottom third of that strike zone to be getting peppered with sinkers. All right, because that's where he's going to be going. He's going to pep you with that sinker low. At times, he's going to come inside, maybe in in the middle third of the plate to the inside, and he's going to come back away with that nasty slider that's going to break off the plate, especially to the right-handers. And then from time to time, he's going to sprinkle in that knuckle curve. And what makes that slider particularly devastating as much as his knuckle curve is the fact that he has a cutter to go with it. So you don't know if that pitch is going to be 88 miles an hour and going to be a cutter that's going to break right on the edge of the plate or if it's going to slow down with a similar spin and be that slider that's going to break even harder off the edge of the plate and be outside of the strike zone. So you're going to have to be very disciplined. Especially Nick Cassianos, I'm talking to you. In the middle of that, in, in the fifth spot, you got to be very, very disciplined. Because if you look at our lineup now, you have JT sitting at that third spot, I, I believe. Yeah. So you have Kyle Schwarber. I like that matchup against um, uh, McCullers. And Schwarber's discipline. He gets on base a lot. And then Reese Hoskins is going to have to be very, very disciplined. Reese Hoskins is a pull hitter, which means he's going to be susceptible to not only the cutter, especially inside, if he tries to saw Hoskins hands off but definitely that slider if he gets down in the count he's going to have to be very disciplined because you're going to want to be able to get to those guys in JT and especially Bryce Harper so if Reese Hoskins is able to be disciplined I think we have a a very good uh, opportunity to beat Lance McCullers today which is why I'm going to pick the Phillies to win this game I think in a probably maybe like a 5-4 game or a 6-4 game it's going to be a very very tense game for both sides and I think that the Phillies are going to be 
a little more disciplined than they were in in the last game. And they're going to be able to get to Lance McCullers, I think, by the fifth inning. Just That's my prediction. And they need this victory because going into game four, Javier is really, really, really good. He's going to be very tough to beat. So you're going to want to get this victory in game three versus McCullers. As good as he is, as much of a wild card as he is, I think this is a very, very good opportunity for them to be able to jump out early, be able to get a lead and sustain it and hold it through game three. And then be set up very well to be able to, if, even if they don't win game four, they can come right back against Verlander, who as nasty as he is on the mound, he is, we, we saw it in game one, how quickly things can fall apart for him in the World Series. I don't know what it is about the World Series, him going 0 for 6, but we want to get back to Verlander, okay? So game three, you have Lance McCullers. Game four, you have Nola on the mound. So I, I like that. And then game five, you're going to be back to Wheeler. So that's that's what it's looking like. All right, game three, Suarez, McCullers. Game four, Nola, Javier. And then game five, oh, excuse me, Syndergaard, Verlander. And then game six, if, if necessary, you're right back to Zach Wheeler. So let's get it done tonight. Let me know what you guys think about this video. My prediction is Phillies by a two-run margin, maybe 6-4, 7 five, something like that. And let's go out there and get this dub. Leave your comments, concerns below, and... Hey, we'll get right back after it, after the game. Catch you on the next one. Peace.